Hey guys, Brendan from Productions here. I'm gonna start out with this video, or I'm gonna start this video out with some announcements. Uh, so, okay. So uh, recently, Twig Control 1.5 released. Uh, it adds new updates, allowing you to not only sync commands with Twitter, but also your Facebook status updates. So uh, yes, that is double the amount of places where you can actually update your status and get your computer to do things. Not only that, but mo uh, Facebook and Twitter both support mobile updating, so you can uh, make your computer do stuff while you're not there. Uh, the new update also allows you to send stuff to your email instead of directly to your cellular device, just in case you don't have a cell phone or uh, you just want to keep it for your email because you don't want to give away your phone number, even though I don't take that information anyway. If you just want to feel safe, uh, I understand. Uh, secondly, I also got an email from uh, some uh, some people, actually a group of people, saying that they want to see my desktop wallpapers in videos. So uh, I guess I'll start out each video with my wallpaper, and uh, here's my wallpaper now. Yeah, very nice. It's uh, nothing really, just uh, coast of California. Looks nice, right? Yes. Okay. So. Uh, uh, this f tutorial is actually a uh, request by made by Boombrush. You can go ahead and test. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, what am I saying? Let me start that over. This video is actually a request made by Boombrush. Uh, he actually sent me this uh, piece of code that he wanted me to share with you guys. So pretty smart guy. Uh, go ahead and check him out at YouTube.com/Boombrush. And uh, what it is is how to add filters to your save dialog, save file dialog. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a sample application. And uh, yeah, we'll wait for that to load. I'm also planning on getting a, uh, a new computer, however my funds are a little short. But uh, hey, if you want to help me out with uh, getting that, you can always donate on my website, brennsoft.com. It's always there, always an option. So uh, yeah, go go do that. All right, so now that the form is loaded, we're going to go ahead and uh, get right into the project. So in order to save things, for example, into a text box or a text document, generally we want a text box to manage the uh, actual text. So we're going to go ahead and add that to our form by uh, going over to the toolbox and uh, waiting for the controls in there to load. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Alright, so now that they are loaded, we're just going to go ahead and pop a text box in there. Actually, we're going to make a rich text box because I'm feeling rich today. Uh, <laughs> okay, and uh, we're also going to add a button which saves the file when, uh, when uh, we press it. So all we need to do is save the file when we press the button. We don't need anything else in this application because all I'm going to be demonstrating is save file dialog filters. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a save file dialog. So we're going to dim save file dialog SFD as new save file dialog. And uh, now what we want to do is pretty much we just want to set the filter. And uh, this can easily be done by accessing the filter property. However, there are certain syntax that must be done in. So the first thing you need to do is type in the, okay, first let's go over what a filter is. If you um, press the save as button, for example, normally down at the bottom of the save dialog, you have a list of extensions you can choose from. For example, .txt, .rtf, .doc. Uh, those are all common extensions. And a filter is the thing that allows you to select your extensions. So now we're just going to be adding that to our application. So the first thing you need inside quotations is the name of the extension. So we're going to start with .txt, which is a text file. And then you want to press space and then open parentheses and say asterisk dot and then the extension. Close your parentheses. And then what you want to do is uh, this little line thing. Now, this little line thing pretty much just, it separates entries. I don't know why it's... Uh, why they use a line instead of something else but uh yes if you don't know where that is it's shift and then i think that is forward no that's backslash shift backslash 
get you that line. And then you want to type some other entries. So let's do some rich text file or dot rtf. And then, uh, yeah. So since we only have, want two options for our program, that's all we're going to do. And then we want to do sfd dot show dialog. And then uh, dim writer as new system dot io dot stream writer. sfd dot file name. Yes, and then writer dot write, rich text box one dot text, writer dot close. If you don't know what I did there, uh, I have a tor tutorial on how to write and read documents. But pretty much all we're doing is creating something that writes the text into a specified text file, which was is defined with the save file dialog, and then we're writing it and then we're closing it to save memory. So let's go ahead and debug this. I'm going to start debugging. And uh, so we're going to type some text into our text box. I'm just going to type my YouTube channel. Oh my goodness. And uh, then we're going to save it by pressing button 1. And then we're going to navigate to the de tech desktop. And as you notice, we have... Uh... Oh, okay. It seems uh, that we have a problem here. It only shows the text file.txt. However, that does work, so we're, I'm just going to save this as YouTube. And then if I uh, go back to my desktop here, the file is there youtube.rtf. Okay, well, got to say that is definitely not what I was looking for. Uh, maybe there can't be a space there, possibly. Oops. Okay. Uh, I think there has to be a space. Okay, that's probably it. There probably has to be a space before and after that little separator line. So let's try that. Okay. Okay. Something is definitely going down. Wow. This was a... This was a fail. Okay, so... What we're going to do is we're just going to uh, leave it at text file. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We'll cut out the second part and leave it just like that and see if this works. And uh, how did it save it? Oh, it just saved it as lol, no extension. Okay, I got it now. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got your number on the wall. Okay, okay, just, I'm really sorry about this. Give me one second. Okay, I'm really sorry about that. I know you didn't feel that, but uh, I, I paused and returned. Um, so after uh, researching the code a little bit uh, on uh, Microsoft's website, I figured out that here is how it is structured. First, you have what the user sees as what the extension is called. And then you do a line, and then you list what the actual extension is. And if you have any other extensions, you do another line, and then, uh, whoa, you do another line and then list what the user sees, line, another extension, and then if you wanted to do another one, you list another line and then what the user sees. And then another line to get the actual thing. And then there we go. So we can go ahead and test this guy out by typing in some code, pressing button one, and then uh, we type in hello. 
So now we have three extensions, text files, all files, and awesome extension. So if we switch to awesome extension, you re realize that it adds .ae to the end of the name. And then same thing with .txt and all files, it doesn't do anything. But we can save it as a .ae file. And uh, if we check back on our desktop, it is saved like that. So uh, sorry for the huge mishap. Uh, I know that happens a lot in my videos, but to tell you the truth, I don't rehearse my videos. I just kind of do them on the spot and from my head. So really sorry about that. That was that was bad. But here's the code. If you'd like to see, uh, I'll even uh, give you five seconds. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you in future videos. See ya.